what's in store for 2024? Well, meteorologists don't have a crystal ball, but we do forecast the future. Minutes in advance, we can tell you when and where a tornado will strike. Days out, we can begin to narrow down where a hurricane might go. And a week out, we might be able to tell you when it'll next rain. But beyond that, things get a little bit murky. Science says we can't make deterministic or specific forecasts beyond 9 or 10 days out. Despite that, we can make broad course predictions based on probabilities or odds. We can convey whether next year looks wetter or drier than normal, or search for ingredients that could influence how much snow we get. Large scale cycles or patterns called teleconnections can inform what we have coming down the pipeline. Now it's all far from set in stone, but let's look ahead to some of the many things we're watching for 2024. If you like this video and want to see more like it, click on the like button. It really helps us out a lot. And of course, if you are not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. It's totally free. And click on that notification bell. That way you always know whenever we drop a new video or whenever we go live. For starters, it's looking like mid-January could feature our next pulse of winter weather. We're expecting something called a sudden stratospheric warming. That's when the upper atmosphere over the North Pole warms quickly. That in turn displaces pockets of frigid Arctic cold, pushing them to the mid-latitudes. It's a recipe for cold air outbreaks over North America. We can't predict specific storms, but we can predict a stormier pattern. That's backed up by the Arctic Oscillation. When the Arctic Oscillation is positive, the cold air remains bottled up in the Arctic. When it's negative, it can slosh south into the lower 48. Weather models do hint that it could go negative in the next couple of weeks. Prediction number two. Tornado season could be busier than average over Florida and part of the south, but less active over the plains. We have a strong El Nino ongoing right now. El Nino is the positive phase of ENSO, or the El Nino Southern Oscillation. El Nino begins as a warming of water temperatures in the eastern tropical Pacific. That heats the air above, causing it to rise and generating low pressure. That low pressure then splits the jet stream. One branch surges north into British Columbia. The other branch barrels east and swings across the southern United States. That induces wind shear, or a change of wind speed and or direction with height. Wind shear causes thunderstorms to rotate, sometimes producing tornadoes. Now historically, Florida sees more severe thunderstorms and tornado activity during an El Nino winter. Sometimes the Deep South does too. Beyond April, however, we're not sure how the status of any lingering El Nino or a flip to La Nina will affect severe weather season over the plains. Prediction number three, it's going to be an active or a very active hurricane season. Yeah, we sound like a broken record. The past eight seasons have been normal or way above normal, including one or two hyperactive seasons. This one looks to be especially busy too. Now hurricane season peaks in August, September, and October. By then, our El Nino is expected to pivot instead to La Nina. Then the eastern tropical Pacific will be cooler, which will cause the air there to sink. That makes something called the Whopper circulation. The idea is simple. What goes up must come down, and vice versa. So if there's sinking air in the Pacific, you have rising air in the Atlantic. That makes it easier for Atlantic hurricanes to form. We'll also have less wind shear. Too much wind shear and we disrupt a storm, playing tug of war and tearing it apart. But with lesser, with relaxed shear, storms can maintain and sustain themselves. They become mature hurricanes. That's another reason to expect a busy season. Prediction number four. It could be a banner year for the Northern Lights, perhaps even across parts of the United States. The Northern Lights happen when high energy particles from space bombard Earth's magnetic field. Our magnetic field converts them into harmless light. Most of these high energy particles come from CMEs, or coronal mass ejections. Those leap off the sun in spectacular eruptions. Now, CMEs usually come from sunspots, or bruise-like discolorations on the surface of the sun. Sunspots are most frequent every 11 years during the peak of the solar cycle. This year is the peak of solar cycle 25, which will come sometime between January and October. In other words, more sunspots, so more opportunities to get CMEs. And if we get a big enough CME pointed towards Earth, we get the lights here in the lower 48. And speaking of space, here's prediction number five. The total solar eclipse will be an absolute showstopper. This one's an easy prediction because honestly, there's no guesswork involved. A total solar eclipse is coming on Monday, April 8th, 2024. Cities like San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Little Rock, Cleveland, and Buffalo will all experience a sudden nightfall in the middle of the day. 
the moon will block the sun, and you'll even get to see the sun's breathtaking atmosphere, aka the solar corona. Now obviously the weather could be a little iffy for that one, so we'll be keeping tabs, but hey, we do that every day. That's our job, and we'll always be here watching the weather for you every step of the way. Keep it in my radar on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and right here in the free My Radar app. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.